the intention behind this interview is for the participants of the event to get to know you better as somebody who's relatable. Uh, because I have to tell you, when I read your book, I see myself in it. That's why I wrote the book, because I felt as someone who had left physics and had nothing to lose by telling the truth, I could reveal, um, you know, the feelings, uh, more the emotional side of trying to be a woman or a person of color in physics and the other sciences and uh, not risk what someone might uh, be putting on the line if she wanted to continue on in the field. I can't believe that it was a problem to sell the only woman in the room. You have no idea. Even after, you know, a huge excerpt from it appeared in the New York Times and went viral. And I still couldn't, I still had trouble selling the book. And a, a big shout out to Beacon Press in America because uh, the women editors there really got what I was trying to do. Uh, but the reception, I think, in the science circle, was it everything you hoped for? I was, I was shocked and, and somewhat dismayed <laughs> because as I said, I wanted younger women to be saying no this isn't true. And the only women who were not, so women who were still un, in high school or undergraduates were saying, no, no, you know, we don't feel this way. And I think young women today are brought up to think they can be anything. And they're sort of not catching what's going on until it's almost too late and they're a little more defenseless against it because they're supposed to think that they're that they can do anything and nobody is stopping them and there are none of these forces still at work. You explain how this played out for you at school. You were on this debate team, which was extremely competitive and very successful as well. I think you went to compete on a national level and you describe how tough it was for you as a girl, because there is this contradicting expectations. When you're on a debate team, you debate to win, which means that you are argumentative, do everything in your power to make your point. But on the other hand, you have those judges and their expectations of you as a woman, as a girl, are for you to be more tame and, you know, nice and kind and create the space for everybody else to talk. This kind of balancing act is something that women in science do every single day. So I wonder... What are your thoughts on this? I, I thought a lot about it, and it's true in the humanities as well. You know, just uh, it's something women, um, and I think especially women of color, face all the time. So much of it is about not caring, right? So if we go into those seminars and meetings thinking that we're supposed to be likable and lovable and dateable, um, then we're playing into that notion that the workplace is a place for romance and sexuality and likability, right? And so we, we just have to separate the two, right? You're not there at the seminar to have them like you or think you're X, Y, or Z kind of woman, right? You're there to showcase your work, to defend your work, to invite contributions to your work. And I think you can do that by being nice, um, I don't think you have to be aggressive if you're not naturally aggressive, but you can stand up for yourself, right? And so much of it is just about making these issues visible, talking about them, and then deciding whether we care or not, right? Whether we're going to fall into the old tracks. So one of the moments that you had to assert yourself was the moment when you decided to go after your dream and apply to Yale to become a physicist. And there was a lot of skepticism about you pursuing physics. You were even advised to lie on your college application to Yale and say that you're interested in medicine or social science because physics seemed so gender inappropriate. And in the first place, you had to check if Yale even admitted women. Can, can you comprehend this today? It's so hard to imagine. I have to say too, that although it, it seems like it was ages ago, it really wasn't ages ago, it was one generation ago. And we thought that there was no more sexism. We thought everything was opening up to us. So it wasn't that, I wasn't thinking 
oh, Yale didn't take women until recently. I was thinking, I can go to Yale. They take women. Every problem's been solved. <laughs> I can do anything, you know. Um, and so it didn't seem as impossible as it really was, you know, which I think is similar to today, where, as I said, young women are raised to think. Very much so. And thought and then are shocked by like they don't recognize what they're really being, you know, struggling against. It's like an invisible, you know, current that you're exactly. pushing. You, you don't think it's there. So you think it's you that there's something wrong with you. We don't realize that the implicit bias is in us as well. So the studies that were starting to come out when I published uh, The Only Woman in the Room were showing that there was no difference between the bias that um, was shown to fe young female job candidates by young female professors and old white male professors. Oh yeah. Right? Both groups were just as disinclined to hire the woman, to mentor her, to view her as competent or to give her a fair salary, right? It's in us. It's right? in us. We, we discriminate against each other and against ourselves and don't see ourselves in the way. So it's not something that, it's so unseen that we don't even see it in ourselves. Yale turned out to be a very tough experience for you. And you were uh, oftentimes very isolated. Your male colleagues, they weren't very helpful. They didn't even want to study with you. You were ostracized for asking questions and at times very, very lonely and isolated. And it took a toll on your mental health. You even battled food disorders. So I wonder what is your advice to women who are in situations like that, because, you know, those kind of toxic environments, they are still present in science and they are not going anywhere anytime soon. The question is, what do you do when you have to survive this kind of environment to pursue the scientific path of your choice? What do you do to protect yourself? Um, I think seeking out at least one other person, but as many people as you can, who might band together with you to make it a more livable experience um, I heard that again and again. But it's also realizing you have to keep yourself healthy, go to the gym, go for a walk, you know, keep up, you know, your social relationships, your friendships. It's really frowned upon in the scientific community, especially in graduate school. You're told oh, yeah. you're not a serious scientist if you go oh, yeah. to dance class. And we have to change that culture for men as well as women. We have to stand up to that and know that you may be told you're going to be less competitive, but you will not be less competitive if you stay healthy. One of those horrible things um, you've experienced during this internship at the Oak Ridge uh, Laboratory that you've mentioned, it was a super prestigious internship to get. You were a great candidate, but even though when you got in, you heard from one of your colleagues, male colleagues, should I add, that it's only because you are a woman that you got admitted. I heard it many times. Every time I got something, I was invited to a conference for um, undergraduates interested in going on in theoretical physics. Um, I was told that if I did get into a good graduate school, it would only be because I was a woman, you know? And when I was writing the book, um, I realized how much this affected women, but I talked to some male professors and the good ones, <laughs> you know, the ones who were seeing what was going on with their female students. And they said, you know, any woman who got herself to the point where she was even in the room was by far more, you know, competent, some of the more brilliant than any of the guys who got there just by being mediocre and they didn't realize that, right? And it's true for women and people of color that you are, from, from the moment you're born, um, overcoming so much discouragement and neglect and you're so, you know, that if you are even in the room, you are by definition far ahead of anybody else in that room, you have what it takes. You have only heard once from someone you trust that you do belong here and that 
you know, the fact that you're questioning it is a sign of how you were raised as a woman. That you know, if you hear any of this, then next time you worry and have that doubt, or somebody says to you, you only got here because you're a woman, you know how to, you know, what bin to place that in. They was the rubbish bin, you know, that it really isn't true. Do you think you would have pursued a PhD if you if you've gotten even a tiny bit of encouragement? Would I have stayed uh, if I had gotten encouragement? Yes. All right. I think women and minorities need to realize that the people to whom they're looking for encouragement don't really know them or see them and aren't in a position to know they should be encouraged. When I was researching the book, I met a young woman who had been far more brilliant than I would have ever been. She was, oh my God, she, her, her list of credentials as a graduate student was just astonishing. She dropped out. I was shocked. She said, I read your book and I realized the guy didn't know who I was. He had no clue who I was. He didn't know what I had a title and all the you know. She had already published a paper. None of the guys had ever even, you know. And I thought, we think they know and they're judge qualified to judge us and we're waiting for their approval. Mm -hmm. don't even, or they have us confused with the one other woman in the room or they, you know, see this one black student think she's another black student, you know, or they don't see either of the black students. Oh, yeah. um, we're not being encouraged because we're not good enough and they don't even have a clue who we are. I wonder what do you think would be different about you if you stayed in physics? My friends can't, my writer friends can't believe that I say, I wish I were a theoretical physicist. I wouldn't be the person I am. I might not have lasted. I might not have even sur literally survived. Um, I think I would have been a mess as a human being. I wish I could be the per I could have, if I were the person I am now, a younger version with my confidence, a sense of what it takes to be healthy and my sense of humor, and I could have gone through physics as that person, that would have been ideal. And so what I'm, what I'm hoping is that that's more of a possibility for young women, young people of color, that you don't feel that you have to be less, be only part of yourself, um, be unhealthy, um, stunted in a way, unhappy to become what you really want to be.